right, my name is George Robb. I'm from the U.S., and most of you are not, so here we go. <laughs> All right. I'm assuming, I'm assuming you speak English. Yeah. Yes, you swine, you American swine. We all speak English. Most of the rest of the world speaks multiple languages, unlike you American people who don't speak shit except for American. <laughs> so uh, I hate my testicles. And I thought, how can I punish my testicles? I know. I'll go to Sweden in February. <laughs> and they will learn their lesson. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, wow. If I ever need gravel, I know where to come. <laughs> Just gravel. Gravel. Is that the word? Sorry. Gravel. Gravel. I love your language. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Kind of the way, you know, like choking a cat is beautiful. <laughs> So my name is George Rob. I realize most of you people have no clue who I am. So this first song is, is either for you. What's that? Finland? What? You have not yet been in Finland. I have not. Yeah, I know. So I'm, I'm going to Finland tomorrow because I hate my asshole as well. And it has to be taught. It has to be taught. <laughs> Which is kind of the past. <laughs> Past tense of tight, which is perfect. <clears throat> Ouch. Um, okay, maybe you're a skeptic and you've come here to see me, and maybe you're a skeptic who brought a date along, and let me say I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe you're someone who's come just to a comedy night, and there's this bald American, and you don't know what's going on. Well, this first song is for you. This is a true story. I sit in the park and play. Folks walk up to me and sometimes say, Hey, play something. Go on, give us a show. Is there something you've written that we might all know? And I say, You've never heard of me. No, not a word from me. Everything that I have made remains all unshown. I title your request must surely be in jest. I promise you I am completely unknown. But this is the song I'll choose to try and appease. I haven't got long, okay, at least you said please. You've never heard me sing or seen me do anything. There's no point to resist, but you'll be unimpressed by my lack of fame. So this is the song I'll choose if you ask me to play. You'll nod and smile politely, then you'll turn and walk away. Why don't you turn and walk away? I won't be famous anytime soon. have one thing at which we do excel. My one thing is I know the house band's way better in hell. Way better in hell. I won't be famous anytime soon. But I can play a pretty fine tune. I won't be famous anytime soon. But hey, don't feel bad for me, I know how this story ends. I won't be famous anytime. 
time soon But I can play a pretty fine tune I won't be famous anytime soon But I can play a pretty fine tune Thank you. So what am I doing in Sweden? What exactly am I doing in Sweden? Well, it's a, it's a funny story. <laughs> oh, I should probably tell it. My last album, my last album was called Trebuchet, uh, and still is, was and still is, and probably will be, at least until it's run out of print. Um, and on, in, within the album, within the packaging of the album, Within the packaging of one particular album, I included what I called a golden ticket. Yes, my Willy Wonka was showing. And uh, I said, whoever got the golden ticket, you know when a little kid, I got a golden ticket. You know that movie, right? Yeah. Uh, whoever got the golden ticket, I would come to your house and do a performance. Not come in your house, but come to your house and do a performance. Unless you wanted me to come in your house, that's fine too, whatever. After all, you won the ticket, so... <laughs> um, so I released the album thinking that, like, you know, it'd be somewhere in the U.S., maybe California, someplace exotic, something like that. And about uh, two months went by, and I got a phone call on my cell phone, my newly acquired cell phone at the time. So no one had this number except, like, maybe four people and whoever won the golden ticket. So the phone rings, and I look at the phone, and there's 87 numbers on the phone. <laughs> hello? Um, hello? I have the golden ticket. <laughs> oh, I said, hi, this is George. Uh, who's this? Where are you from? This is uh, Mika from Finland. <laughs> <laughs> cool, that's great. <laughs> You don't have to come. It's very cold. I said, no, 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 I'm gonna come. I'm gonna totally come and it'll be fine. And it'll be great. And we'll have a blast because we're gonna have to stay warm somehow. So, uh, so I knew I was gonna be in Manchester. I was in Manchester two weeks ago uh, hosting a conference called QED. Question, explore, discover. A skeptics conference. It was really cool. And uh, I thought, ooh, well Manchester is like on this part of the planet. So why don't I just kind of go over to Manchester, and then just kind of go, and then in the meantime, a bunch of Swedes and some Norse people and some other kind of, you know, ape mountain people got in touch with me and said, hey, can you do a concert here and here and here and here and here? And I said, sure. So here we are. Here we are in lovely, what town is this again? <laughs> You're pulling my leg, aren't you? Hey, it's bad enough it took me six months to learn how to say, but Jotebur, 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 Jotebur. What the fuck me, man? God, I love it. I love it. I love language. I love the sound of language. Just not your language. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, here is a, a kind of a theme song of, of, of mine amongst skeptics. What's a skeptic? Well, a skeptic is someone that says, show me, prove it, prove it whatever it is. And here is a uh, kind of a skeptical theme song. It's sort of a uh, atheist gospel song or a gospely atheist song, <laughs> depending on how you're keeping score. <laughs> oh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm in England, isn't it? <laughs> yes. As sure as the star-bellied sneeches butter the underside of their toast, all things being equal, the simplest answer is worth most. Don't rely on Vishnu, Buddha, Ran, Bo, Beel, or the Holy Ghost. Just consider these words, and that ship of life you're sailing on might not smash into the coast. <laughs> Watching every channel, all that I do is see. Oceans of gullible conformity. Oh, I've had enough of all the smiles and all the teeth and all the nods. And I'm sick of all those promises from magic rays to painless perfect bots. 
Watching every image that flashes before me, I can't believe the level of spirituality. Oh, I've had enough of the geeks who claim to have found the way. I wish that guy watching would just take one sec and consider what I have got to say. Deep in the sand And what they're trying to sell to you You shouldn't be buying Think for yourself, little girl I don't want to tell you How to run your world Cause everyone's the same Choking back that nervous hell And if they tell you they ain't Well, they're just lying Yeah, they're just lying in the standard magazines I wonder if they realize what all that small print means oh you need a microscope to read about the no fault guarantee and to see that this results not typical and this offers void in any state that's spelt with an E watching all the people place bet after amazing bet I wonder if they realize their misplaced rest on debt. Oh, they don't want to hear about the odds and statistic A and statistic B. Because they got a brother who's got a sister who's got a friend who's got a mailman who says, hey, this stuff always works for me. That's why I say, I think for yourself, little folks. Check one, two, one, two, is this thing on? Hey, these are the jokes. Beware of the dudes who don't like jabs and pokes. Cause if you can't laugh at yourself, you just end up crying. Think for yourself, little friend. Is it you that they like? Or is it the money you spend? Beware of the jerks who will sooner break than bend. And to question anything at all, it's just like dying. Yeah, to them it's the same as dying. Listening to the radio from my comfy cozy chair. No one seems to question all the claims are on the air. Oh, I'm so tired of the offers that are so damn tremulous. And I can't conceive the cash of creeps and cretins who continue to be so intently credulous. That's why I say, I'll think for yourselves, everyone. Don't believe what is said, put your stock in what's done. Insist on all the facts, and then add up your own sum. Or else the punch you receive, it won't be Hawaiian. I'll think for yourselves, one and all. Don't jump to conclusions, don't beat up Peter if you're pissed at Paul Don't fall for anything, yeah Please don't drop the ball, just be sure to do your who, what, where, when, and why and Just be sure to do your who, what, where, when, and why and Just be sure to do your who, what, where, when, and why and Yeah, why and Whatever you do, make sure you think for yourself Kind. Thank you very much. You might notice out there uh, circulating amongst the tables are uh, little cards and there's some pens floating around. If you'd like to write down a question, please feel free. I will answer the question later on in the program. If there's time, I'm sure there'll be time. We'll be fine. But write down a question, any kind of question you'd like, personal question, trivia question, sexual advice, <laughs> who will win Eurovision song, whatever you want to ask is totally fine with me. And uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. Please uh, write as illegibly as possible. Use your monkey paw if you can, yes. There's a band out of Chicago, Illinois. Now, if you picture the US and you put a dot pretty much right in the middle, a little bit high, that's where Chicago is. 
and uh, they're called Beatnik Turtle. And Beatnik Turtle are the kind of band that are insane. They're insane because they always challenge themselves to do things. And what Beatnik Turtle challenged themselves to do is to write one song a day for a year. <laughs> and they fucking did it. It was 365 songs that they wrote and they posted these things. They finished that and they thought, what else could we do to challenge ourselves? So they said, ooh, how about this? How about we write and record an entire album in a month? So they called me up on February 1st and they said, George, we're doing a kid's album. Can you write us a song? And I said, sure. Is it, a, is it an album like for kids or an album about childhood? And they said, we don't know. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, so we talked a little bit and I came up with a title and I said, when do you need this by? And they said, tomorrow. I said, okay. Because uh, we're recording drums the day after that, so please do it. So what I did is I kind of hung up the phone and I pictured my eight-year-old nephew, who at the time was eight years old. <laughs> See how that works out? I love math. I'm such a nerd, I just love math. Um, I sat him down and I wanted to tell him what was different when I was eight years old from when he was eight years old. And I came out with this. This is called When I Was Your Age. When I was your age, the phone was tied to the wall with a kinky, twisty, three and a half foot cord. It's hard to believe, but it had a ring that could not be turned off or ignored. You couldn't choose the sound of the ring, it was just the sound we called the phone. We never heard of a ringtone. When I was your age, our video games looked nothing like the illustrations on the box. All of the graphics consisted of nothing more than simple lines and dots. Missiles were just a few pixels and the jungle swinging guy was a stick figure. Nothing bigger. stuff called film you would stick in a camera before you took a shot and then you had to wait like a week until you could tell what pictures you got you would hand the film to a guy in a parking lot who lived in a booth yeah that's the truth You had to wait till the movie was either in the theater or on TV. If you wanted adventure, you couldn't rent adventure. You just had to wait and see. And once you were watching, you couldn't stop or pause. my teeth, but I brushed my teeth because Bert and Ernie said that I should. I didn't like listening to mom, though I knew deep inside it was the right thing to do. And hey, so do you. You know what's true. Before you can say boo, you'll be my age too. You know, 
nerds having children. That's what that song is. <laughs> so the second song on the album that I mentioned that had the golden ticket is uh, one of the most sort of positive, uplifting songs I think I've ever written. It's one of the most uh, happy, oh nice, thank you. One of the most super duper sort of positive, it talks about our place in the universe. It talks about how special we are as individuals and also how we have a shared burden on this planet. And it's the most sort of uplifting song I think I've ever written. This one is called, Everything Alive Will Die Someday. <laughs> Someday, that's okay. It's the great equating factor in the world. Like some desiccated tractor, we all run out of gas. This life can't last, because everything alive will die someday. I used to worry that my folks would someday die, because that meant if they could, then that meant so could I. Too young to handle this morose philosophy. I'd rather get high my way, climbing up a tree, and staring at the huge small world I could survey. I wondered what it'd feel like on that final day, and calculated the heartbeats left in my lot, then realized that best relax and just enjoy the time I Someday, that's okay. From the single cellular to grandiose, seems we're all destined to be toast. Every leaf, bush, shrub, and tree will cease to be, cause everything alive will die someday. Die someday. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Speaking of dying, that was a handsome man. <laughs> Too much hair, though. <laughs> every empire crumbles. Every mammoth stumbles to the ground. Ally and enemy both kick the bucket equally. And in this truth, there lies a fact. If you ignore those who distract, you might get to realize the fairness of unfairness is in everything's demise. You should remember that everything alive will die someday, and that's hard to say. But to me it's more a blessing than a curse. Is this a chorus or a weird verse? Every hand that's ever writ will up and quit. Cause everything alive will die someday. In the meantime, I get to see you smile, and that makes it okay for a while. To look into your eyes is worth the eventual demise of Earth and of every living cell. What the hell? We get to be like Deborah and Clyde for a few days. Someday, but let me say, you shouldn't do just whatever you will. Don't ever cause any ill and historic reversal. Don't you know? This is the only chance we've got. It ought to mean an awful lot. This is the show and not some rehearsal. Talk of an extra inning. Implies this is just a beginning But there's no prize you will be winning Your existence is enough of a reward to keep you grinning Or at least it should be
Do you know we have a the, the the chewing tobacco that we have in the states? It's called Skull. Do you know that? The little you snooze that we have. You have snooze, right? Yeah. Which now there's a product called Snooze. S-N-U-Z with an umlaut over the U. <laughs> which is probably like fucking the queen to you people. It's probably such an insult, and I'm sorry on behalf of America, but all that, you don't give a shit about the queen? I don't know, do you give a shit about the queen? No. No, no, oh good, okay. So it's like not raping the queen. That's what it's like. It's like not raping the queen. No, wait, is this the queen that was like the housewife, or is that the, that's the Norse queen that was the housewife with the kid, right? No, am I confused? The Norse queen. The, okay, Norway. Or they're all have housewives and kids, whatever. <laughs> oh, you and your you and your mock royalty. You and your you and your Disney royalty. I love it. It's like you want a king and queen? Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah. So they'll be in like like they'll be royal, they'll be like a king and a and a, and a queen. Uh, and like kids. Yeah. <laughs> We'll put them on, um, the money? Yeah, the money. And postcards. Postcards, yeah. Oh, Americans will eat that shit up. No, 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 it's kind of encouraging. Uh, time for another theme song, and what we can do is, uh, for those of you that are still here, oh, wow, you're all still here, awesome. Um, uh, the chorus of this next song, this is called Skeptic. And I actually wrote this song in, in England, of all places, about 15 years ago, just for fun, just because I was sitting in a pub, waiting for my friend to arrive, and uh, hiding from the police, and I had to kill some time, and uh, after killing the people in the apartment, and I thought, you know what? Let me write a song called Skeptic, just because it'll interest me. And uh, uh, to most people, this won't mean much, but I, I went and got to perform this in front of James Randi. You know, who was a... Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. So, like, so I'm in Las Vegas, right? I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Sin City. And uh, I'm performing this song, and, like, right where you are is James Randi. I mean, right, like, right there, you know? And I don't know if you are aware, James Randi is a, is a sort of the Mahaf king skeptic dude. But for those of you that know James Randi, he's actually this big. He's like a garden gnome. And what they do is the JREF, they have like, a, like one of those cat carriers. You know the things you put a cat into on the airplane? They have one of those for him. And they bring it to the conference and they slowly open up the gate. Slowly open up the gate. And he runs out and he goes... Ooh, ooh, ooh. And he does magic tricks, <laughs> runs back into the cat carrier, and he flies off to some other country. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Just don't tell him I said that. <laughs> no, James Randi is awesome. So he's sitting right there. He's fucking sitting right there, and he's singing along. And like every neuron in my brain is going. James Randi, I'm singing song. Awesome. So let's uh, let's pretend that he's here. <laughs> yeah. No, let's pretend that he's here and we'll sing to him. And the chorus goes like this: You can't believe what a skeptic I am. I can't believe you believe in that man. We disagree, but I still give a damn. That's the chorus, and they sung it really loud in Lund. Not that I'm keeping score. <laughs> <laughs> you know who sung it really loud? New Zealand people sung it really loud too. So if you want to sing it, sing along. Ready? Here we go. You can't believe what a skeptic I am. I can't believe you believe in that man. We disagree, but I still give a damn. Excellent. Your guru assures if you follow his regimen, you will become a most excellent specimen. The power to live on and on for all days is right at your fingertips if someone pays. He says that his aura will keep you alive for three easy installments of 1095. The device he uses sucks out the bad juices and leaves no big bruises. It simply deduces the proper percentage of X in your brain. This miracle cure leaves no permanent pain. Your astral projections 
are coming along. Your chakra and chi are both getting real strong. Your cold disappeared after just nine short days, all thanks to the words on the whole earth displays. Now, due to the juices and the pills and the creams, your body's lost toxins, whatever that means. You stopped eating all of that sinister food. Yeah, your dinner tastes awful, so it's gotta be good, right? of treatments from holy men leaves me kind of queasy deep down in the abdomen convinced that the lives that they lead need adjusting they drive to the bookstore and blindly start trusting the miracles and cures all laid down in black ink never even bothering to stop and think the only real power that I do believe the dollars and cents all these authors receive. If miracle wonders were held in their looks, why waste precious time and try selling those books? Why sit and wait for your publishing royalty? If one has true power, who needs reader loyalty? If you can travel by thoughts to a mystical place, why go to book signings and vie for shelf space? Why would you wait for your agent to call you and fence? try to convince you he's worth 10%. Why deal with talk shows and a crazed publicist? Why deal with the people that repeatedly insist that you show them real proof that your powers exist? Yeah, convince some real skeptics or cease and desist. Trust me, six months from now, you folks will not be missed. So what is the moral that we all must learn? Especially those of us with money to burn. Before your eyes widen to the book on the shelf, think. Is he helping you? Or is he helping himself? You can't believe what a skeptic I am. Can I get another water if that's possible? Occasionally you come across a song, and I don't mean that in a nasty way, but occasionally you come across a song, <laughs> when I'm done writing my mind, that's when I come across it. It's like, I'm done, yay! Oh. Um. <laughs> I'm a vulgar, uh, disgusting person, and I apologize, but I am wearing a tie. <laughs> anyway, occasionally you, you find a song, you hear it on the radio, or on Pandora, or maybe on the internet, and you, you realize that this song encapsulates everything that, that you're sort of about. It sort of, it sort of, it sort of fills every bit of your RNA with extra bits of R. <laughs> Nerd joke. Um, and you wish that you had, had written it. You wish that you were the one who had writ it. But you ain't which is a shame. But what you do is you decide to humbly cover it in a situation like this, in a, in a country that freezes your balls off. So this is, this is a song that really just, I don't know, I just heard it and I thought, man, they nailed it. They nailed the human condition. I hope you agree with me. All the single ladies, 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 all the single 
single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Up in the club, we just broke up, doing my own little thing. Decided to dip, and now you want to trip, cause another brother noticed me. I'm up on him, he's up on me, don't pay him any attention. I just cried my tears for three good years, now you know what it's like to miss me. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Don't be mad, cause you see that he wants it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Wow. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Don't be mad because you see that he wants it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. I got gloss on my lips, a man on my hips, tighter in my dairy on jeans. Acting up, drinking my cup, I could care less what you think. I need no permission, did I mention? Don't pay your man any attention. You tried your tears, now you're gonna learn what it really feels like to miss me. If you liked it, then you should've put a ring on it. If you liked it, then you should've put a ring on it. Don't be mad, cause you see that he wants it. If you liked it, then you should've put a ring on it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Don't be mad because you see that he wants it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Wow. It just tears right through you. It just tears right through you. Jay-Z just bought Beyonce an island, apparently. <laughs> like, literally, he bought her an island. Here, have an island. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Here's another row. Here's another tune off of, uh, how are we doing here, good. Here's another song off of uh, Trebuchet. I am selling uh, some CDs in the back. Unfortunately, we're, we're sold out of Trebuchet, but if you go back right to the back, we'll, uh, we'll hook you up for, uh, oh, let's say 100 spent. <laughs> yeah. I really, part of me really hopes that that means cock. Because I asked the guy in Loon, I said, like, what's like a slang term for money? And he said, Spend. <laughs> so I'm really hoping I'm, I'm traveling through your entire country just saying, about a hundred cock. <laughs> yeah, whatever, what, I think that's fair, right? Yeah, for a disc. <laughs> so yeah, so hundred cock right in the back. And we'll hook you up. This is the first song. Oh, at that, at that concert when I was playing for James Randi, who was sitting right there. <laughs> um, I was supposed to go on right before Christopher Hitchens. So I don't know, yeah, exactly. So I don't know if you know Christopher Hitchens, but he's uh, an amazing author. He's uh, battling cancer right now, of all things. So our, uh, our non-prayers go out to him. <laughs> um, he was supposed to go on after me, and I thought, ooh, you know what, I'm going to write a song. I'm going to steal the title from his latest book, and I'm going to write a song based on that. He, of course, he couldn't come to the, uh, to the conference because he had to go to a... Scotch convention or something, I don't know, some kind of like whiskey conference or something, yeah, but, whatever. but uh, I ended up writing a song anyway, so this is called God is Not Great. <laughs> Oh, no. 
quite enough of this bad play. Yet they stay day after day. Less logic, more latrine. God's way to me. somehow uh, chemically, biologically, organically, that uh, if an attractive woman is uh, intelligent, it uh, makes her all the more sexy. It just sort of does something. Uh, uh, exactly, that's what happens. <laughs> Wait, boys. Wait your turn. Um, <laughs> that'd be cool if your balls could do that. <laughs> <laughs> they could just put you on the front of a ship somewhere. Let's <laughs> rob his balls. <laughs> he was funny, but he talked about his balls a lot. <laughs> a lot of balls, a lot of cursing. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah, I'm cold too. Um, <laughs> so attractive women really turned me on. And this is a song for them. This is called Brains. Uh, attractive, intelligent women turn me on. This is a song for them called Brains, Body, Both. <laughs> Like an SNL skit at a quarter to one. What I need is a two sided coin. She better satisfy my brain as well as my loin. She better wear a tight dress and have a mind that's strong. I want brains and a body. Is that so wrong? When she shows me her brain cells, then my pride suddenly swells like a body jelly chick. She's on the half shell, but she likes getting nasty like Tori Wells. And when she's watching Jeopardy, she never has to guess You may ask why I'm specific Well, a dumb girl's effect is soporific I need brains and a bob that are both terrific Like a domain name that's case-specific She's the queen of conversation A panel member on Face the Nation But she gets on all fours without hesitation And she's got the best seat without a reservation Smell her hair, 
and her underwear Cause her derriere goes from here to there It's like two floor toms, rat kick and snare She goes to museums like Whitney to learn About the pigment at the installation She also knows S. Morgan Stern is a figment of imagination She always puts Horace before Descartes She can make a point like Georges Seurat She can choke the chicken like Julia Child And she knows how to make my Oscar Wilde To behold, she knows F is iron and AU is gold. She got the origami hands that can flex and fold. Love for sale, I'm sold, I'm sold. Boys, don't be afraid of a high IQ. A girl with smarts knows what to do. She reads Masters and Johnson and Kinsey too. Do I lie? It's true, it's true. Brains, body bone. and have a Brit wit like Emma Thompson. You can use irony to cut and slay and you can have the chunky glasses like Tina Fey. You better like films by Kurosawa. You better stay naked outside the shower. Better ding, dang, dingle for over an hour than calculate binomials to the 10th power. Oh, so fucking sexy. Brains, body My wick stick out my candle. She knows which one's hiding and which one's handle. So honey, put on a dress that barely fits and then shake your ass. Show me your wits. <laughs> All right, pass those cards up. If there's cards out there, pass them forward, pass them forward. There's a bunch. There's a bunch. Oh, crap. Gonna be here all night. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Pass them up. Pass them up. Pass them up. Oh, who folds them? What are you gonna fold them for? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right. I'll keep folding. All right, obviously I've not seen these yet, so uh, here we go. You have 10 seconds for each answer. I have 10 seconds for each answer. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> you wanted to sit up front, now you can't leave. <laughs> these seats are great. Fuck. And no reservations. No, yeah, that's right. Exactly. B3 babe right there for you. Okay, let me unfold some of these so I can manage them. Again, thank you. Uh, 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 how about a round of applause for the Swedish skeptics for organizing this whole thing, please? Yes. Yes. Martin, Martin has been showing me the town. Thank you very much. I made fun of him earlier, but thank you so much. You're a real gentleman. It's really nice to, really nice to be here with you. So awesome. Okay. What's the first thing you think when you get up in the morning? <laughs> what, again? <laughs> you know, I have never... You know what's the one thing I've never said when I wake up in the morning? I've never, maybe I've, I've said this twice maybe in my entire life. That was enough sleep. <laughs> I have, I, it's like every morning, it just, my alarm clock runs on guilt. <laughs> Get up, you fat fuck. Get up, you fat bald fuck. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Okay. It's 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite drink? Yeah. Uh, 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 the milk of kindness. Yeah. No, I, I don't drink alcohol. That's like a, a, apparently a sin here. Um, <laughs> I do like reindeer blood, though, so it kind of works out. Yeah. yeah, I would say, yeah, some kind of diet something is usually my favorite thing. So if you ever see me somewhere, get me a diet, whatever, or a Pepsi Max. Pepsi Max, no diet, Pepsi Max. Well, it's like diet, no diet, Pepsi Max. But like, it's like diet, right? No, 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 Pepsi Max. All right, give me a Pepsi Max. We're out of Pepsi Max. How many, how many have you been sleeping with? In the 
<laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 34, but you don't say how many what. <laughs> <laughs> Which is better, God or Bud? <laughs> what is Are, do you mean beer or pot? Because <laughs> I would probably say neither. Uh, what does NHL mean? <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I, I assume it means National Hockey League, but let's come up with something good. Maybe it means... Uh, uh, n Norwegian Hill people are lame. <laughs> what is the best thing in life? A smart question. Um, is it important to give sex nasty jokes when you do a stand-up? What? Is it important? Oh, is it, is it important to give sexy nasty jokes when you do a stand-up? It's not important. Uh, uh, it, it shows a it shows a small mind and a huge penis. Um, what is the worst overrated and underrated male grooming trick? Are we talking about manscaping? Is that what we're talking about? Manscaping. Gentlemen, I have one word for you. Manscaping. Imagine, imagine sticking your nose in that thicket down there. Could you imagine? <laughs> what is the most yeah, overrated and underrated? Overrated, I would say, uh, 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 coloring one's hair. Because look what happens. And uh, yeah, underrated, I would say, manscaping. <laughs> yes. Uh, where is Alphonse Uberg's mother? <laughs> That gets the biggest fucking laugh, I love it. All right, explain, explain, what is this, what is this? Go ahead, what is this, what's the deal? It's a children's story, Alfonso Obari. Okay, and he's what, he's, he's a duck, what is it? He turns into a pie, and then, what's the woman in the woods with the tail? What is this, what, who's that now? The Skew the Hooven? She, someone was telling me this yesterday, you guys have the coolest, like, legend kind of things. Like, you know, in America, we're about 18 minutes old, so our legends are like, there used to be a McDonald's that was clean. <laughs> tell me more, father, tell me more. The Big Macs were like this, yeah. So we have no legends. You, you have, like, wood nymphs and fucking bridge trolls and, and sheep that like that bake pizzas and all this like, you know, don't go in the woods because the lady with the long tail and the, the ski boots will, will, she will make waffles for you and you don't want to, it's like, what? Are you kidding me? I love, I love it, I love it. Is it always sunny in Philadelphia? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Uh, why do Americans add S to Legos? <laughs> because there's more than one. Legum. Would you like to play Legum? <laughs> How do you pronounce... Oh, great. Kule? Is that right? K-U-L-E? Or K-U-U? K-U... Yeah, fuck it. Um, if the Earth was the same size as a bowling ball, it'd be as smoth as a bowling ball. <laughs> At least put an umlaut over the other. Okay, but then, where's the three giant holes on Earth? Oh, I see. Okay, so let me, let me do this in English. Uh, <laughs> It's so cruel. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm in a fucking different country. Sorry. If the Earth was the same size of a bowling ball, it would be as smooth as a bowling ball. Do you know that? Yeah, that's the thing. If you were to shrink the Earth down, you would think it's all, it's all hilly and the Himalayas would be all kind of... But no, it, essentially the Earth is so big that the, the mountain ranges and all that stuff, if you were to shrink it down to a bowling ball size or a marble size, uh, it would be completely smooth. Yes, there would be no holes for the fingers because... Do you guys bowl here? Do you have bowling here? <laughs> What's it called? Bullies. <laughs> What's it called? Is it called bowling? Yeah. It's called bowling. Yeah. Bowling. Yeah. yeah. And is it like reindeer antlers you have to knock down? <laughs> close. Close. Um, I had a gob... I don't know why I just thought of this. I, I'm just a small... I had a gobstopper that I bought in a... I, I don't know what you call it, like a candy ball. It was like a field hockey ball. It was like... It was this big. 
I bought it at a candy store in Lund. They had this like like 24-hour candy store, and they had these. What do you call it? It's like a, a gob gob stopper. It was it. What's the what's the what do you, what would you call that? Uh, uh, no idea, right? Hard candy. It's a hard candy oh, yeah. ball, and you just stick it in your mouth and you suck until you die. <laughs> so I I like went. I mean, it's, it's like so I'm sitting there going. <laughs> it reminded me of church. <laughs> <laughs> it got to the point where like it wasn't getting any smaller, which is actually normally a good problem, but uh, it wasn't getting, so I put it in the sink and put the water on and it's kind of watched and it, like it's like just started changing colors. It was really cool. I'm like, fuck eating it. I'm just gonna do this from now on. Okay, vibraphone. Yes, vibes to you. Which current bands slash musicians would you like to be remembered in 300 years and do you think they will be? Thanks. Dominic. Ooh, which current bands? Ugh. The only person I hope is remembered in 300 years, and this is an honest answer, is Frank Zappa. And I think he will be. So Frank is kind of a shit. Awesome. Awesome. I think he will be just because of his voluminous output and the fact that he actually sort of did something significant. I think for the most part, 300 years from now, it's funny, you look back like 200 years ago to like who were like the top singers and stuff, and we have no idea who these people are. Even, even, even like 75 years ago, or 100 years ago, people that in the States anyway, or in, or in England, or, or anywhere that were monstrously popular, you would have no idea who they are, which is so cool. That's why the work is the most important thing. Okay, can you sing Song for Skeptics, please? I think I did that. <laughs> uh, where are all aliens? <laughs> A-I-L-I-A-N-S. I think they're in Alitalia. Okay. Can you sing sham acupuncture with an extremely funky riff? Right. Sham acupuncture. <laughs> that did not deserve that. <laughs> Who's got the best question? Not you. <laughs> Who would you sleep with if you had to choose? Andrew Wakefield or Deepak Chopra? <laughs> Oh, Deepak, totally, because just to hear him kind of like, yes, drive it, oh yes, yes, oh yes, right, no, no, yes, left, left, it's, it's more for eternity that you, oh, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, I think to rape Deepak Chopra would be really cool. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Ageless, huh, motherfucker? I was like, oh yes, we're all, we're all, we're all part of the same person. Um, I hope this is on YouTube at some point, so, hey, what's going on, DC? Come on to Sweden, they love you here. Uh, what happens when an immovable object meets an unstoppable force? Uh, what will be my next occupation? Wow, like, I, I think, typist. Oh, yeah. Uh, am I allergic to cats? <laughs> uh, it depends how you cook them. <laughs> Slice them real thin and cook it for a good 20 minutes, you're fine. Uh, what should I buy my girlfriend for birthday present? Uh, a verb, maybe? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, you know, you have to when you go to the mall with your girlfriend and she kind of casually puts her hand on something and says, you have to take note of that, because that's what she wants. Unless it's like a really handsome guy. <laughs> if you're open-minded, hey, this is Sweden. Uh, how to combat a social phobia when you show up alone somewhere? How to com- oh, how do you combat a social phobia when you show up alone somewhere? I actually have a song for you, Hannah, which I will do in a minute, okay? And I will answer that question. So remember Hannah's question, and I will answer that in a second. Are Swedish people really that rational and logical as people say? Well, yes and no. <laughs> How does an average George Rahab groupie look like? <laughs> well, he's, he's usually 45 years old and <laughs> little thinning hair and he, he's just come from a King Crimson concert. That's what usually you can do. Another question. You have made... You have... 
<laughs> okay, you, I can't read this at all. Forget it. Uh, what song has, in your opinion, the best riff? Ooh, what song has the best riff? Is it Smoke on the Water? No, I wouldn't say Smoke on the Water. Maybe Owner of a Lonely Heart, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's so many. Anything Jimmy Page did pretty much is uh, sort of the best riff. Okay, uh, who do you like most? Pope Benedict or the Chief Ayatollah of Iran? <laughs> I don't know, but what a cage match that would be. <laughs> One for the ages. Thursday, Thursday. Pope Madness, live on stage. I uh, told you, you don't want to miss it. Uh, what's your secret? What's your secret? Bathing often? <laughs> vegetarian. Yeah. Oh, nay. What's your favorite conspiracy theory? Oh, my favorite one is the one that the Bush family are actually lizards from space. Oh, yeah. you know, I love that one. Oh, pages and pages of websites, just like, as you can tell by the way he eats broccoli, he obviously is some type of lizard man. It's like that movie from the 80s, you know, it's called... <laughs> Earlier in the show, a guy said vaccines are not safe. Oh, <laughs> boo, no, vaccines are totally safe. Vaccines are totally, totally safe. Vaccinate your children, vaccinate your children. No joke, no joke. Vaccinate your children. Yes, completely safe. Thank you. Uh, dude, quantum mechanics? Yeah, <laughs> I know, exactly. Um, that's a good question, dude. Quantum mechanics, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> which is the most common question you get? Uh, yeah, often they're hair related, which is like, yeah, okay, great, <laughs> fine. Uh, who is your favorite comedian? Please imitate. I'm not your monkey. <laughs> favorite comedian, yeah, probably like, like George Carlin or someone like that, yeah. Again, like, you know, Zappa's not a comedian, but boy, if I, could, if I could ever get, if I could be as, as talented as the shadow of his pinky, that would be really cool. Uh, do you know any Swedish song? Uh, please sing it. <laughs> no. <laughs> teach me, teach me like one, one quick line of it. What's like, what's, what's, is there a national anthem? What's the first line of the national anthem? Du gamla du fria. All right, sing it. Du gamla du fria du fria. Oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Just the first, just the first, yeah, first. Hit me, just the first like seven syllables. Du gam la du friam. Du gam la du friam. Du Okay, good. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. That's all I got. Do you know I, I'm Ukrainian? I'm 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 first generation Ukrainian from the United States. My parents were born in Ukraine. They came over right after World War II. They met in the U.S., so they were very young when they came here. But I'm first generation. The Ukrainian national anthem. What What's the name of your national anthem? Does it have a title? Like what's it called? Yeah. Sweden, 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 yo. No, what's it called? What's it called? Like I said, you got my No, I mean in English. Go ahead. You're old, you're old, you're free. You're old, you're free. I've got good news and bad news. Which do you want first? Well, Remember, you're free. <laughs> That's pretty good. I have you beat them. The Ukrainian national anthem, and ask anyone that actually knows this, and, then, and I swear, the Ukrainian national anthem, the first line, and the thing that it is called, and this exactly reveals the character of the Ukrainian person, of the Ukrainian, Ukrainian thing, the essence of Ukrainism. <laughs> the first line is, Ukraine is not dead yet. <laughs> Strenov medla Ukraina, Strenov medla Ukraina, ni krasa ni vola. Neither has her glory or her or her freedom. It's like, I thought I think I was 18 before I realized. Like, wait a minute, you know, it's coughing up blood, but it's not dead yet. You're old, you're free. You're old, yeah. Could be worse. We could be old. What's your favorite Swedish anything? 
Uh, shoot, was that? No, that wasn't. No, that was in. That was in Denver. I went through a town that was called Ski, but that was in Denmark, right? That's not. That's not here. Sorry, I was on a train, so I didn't know where the border was. But that's Norway. That's that's okay. Norway. Sorry. Uh, what's my favorite Swedish anything? Uh, um, Me? I love who? Yes, you. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> A little bit of detente. <laughs> um, um, I love that you are secure in having wet floors in your bathroom. Because it's like, you know what? We could put in a shower door that goes all the way across, but why would we want to? <laughs> We're gonna put a drain in the middle of the fucking bathroom floor. And, you know, if your book or your passport or your iPhone is in the bathroom, you're fucked. We don't care. I love that about you people. I love that it's like you have half of a shower door because I think you're just waiting for the Germans. Russians. The Prussians, yeah, the Prussians will be coming. Daddy, why do we have half a shower door? Russians. <laughs> now go to school. I can't, my clothes are all wet. Seriously, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but... And it's like, and you think it's like half of a door that you can slide, but you just kind of go... Oh, okay, I guess we'll just kind of get wet. But I love it, I love it. Do you like Sweden, smiley face? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. What is the similarity slash difference with the structure of an atom and the solar system? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, you know the, the picture of the atom that you have in, in, in grade school, where it's like, pink, and then you have like the things going around it, you know, which looks like a solar system? It's actually nothing like that. It's all like Valens shells. So you sort of have this existing, the, the, the proton and the neutron exist kind of in these shells and it's multiple states and it's all weird. But if you try to explain that to a five-year-old, they kill themselves. <laughs> so you just say, well, it's good, and then just, and you're good to go. So uh, there is, there is some, some similarity, but not that much. A couple more. Uh, what did you think of the QED conference in Manchester? Oh, yes, so this, this thing that I was the host of, QED was was really, really great. It was really, really fun. And uh, the only problem was, uh, for me, I have this weird kind of aphasia. I have this weird kind of brain thing that when I hear an accent, I have to like repeat it back to the person, which like is really insulting. <laughs> and I don't mean it that way. It's just this weird thing. So I was in Manchester having a great time at QED and I went to a little store to buy some diet soda because that's what I live on basically. So I went to the counter and I had a diet Coke and put the thing on the thing, and the guy behind the counter says, uh, just so you know, they're uh, one for uh, one pound fifty, but you get two for one ninety. <laughs> and I said, great! <laughs> he kind of looked at me like, prick. <laughs> so apart from that, it was really good. A couple more. Uh, do you have an academic background? No, I do not. No, I, I have a music degree, which is... <laughs> I'm the one person from my class who's actually, there was like 27 music majors in my school, in my class, the year I graduated, and I'm the only person who like does music for a living. <laughs> Welcome to America. Uh, what do you think of veganism? What is man's rights, obligations towards animals? Wow, yeah, uh, veganism is fine. Uh, 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 that's a weird question. It's a, it's a hard question because I see both sides of it. You know, I think if and again, this is a maudlin answer, but like if farming could be done intelligently without too much suffering, there's a great writer. Her name is Temple Grandin. You ever heard of Temple Grandin? Temple Grandin is someone that has autism, and she grew up and she kind of figured out. She sort of uh, it's really cool. She commiserates with animals. The way her brain is kind of structured, which sounds kind of sexy, but no, is she, she, she understands what affects animals' behaviors. So she designs slaughterhouses, but they're, but they're humane. It's really cool. She understands that a cow does not like right angles. Cows like curves. Cows like to be herded counterclockwise or else they freak out. Cows don't like shiny things in the ceiling because it freaks them out. So she has designed these slaughterhouses that are like so humane and they're really, really cool. So I think if we're gonna be eating food, let's at least, at least you know, take Temple Grand ex example and make it as humane as possible because it's just, because I really love hamburgers. <laughs> uh, why won't good boys get girls? 
I <laughs> couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like the best about Stockholm? Yeah, the gravel. <laughs> I need more gravel in my diet. And finally, the last question, blonde or brunette? Yes. <laughs> Good questions, give yourselves a round. Okay, this next one is for Hannah. This is, this is going to answer the question that Hannah asked. Um, sometimes I like to go to parties by myself and sort of stand in the corner and watch and observe, kind of like an anthropologist. Because <laughs> it's, it's just, you sort of, I, I don't necessarily want to sort of interact with people, just I like to watch what happens. Um, if you do this though, I recommend you don't lick your lips while you're doing it, because that just freaks people out. Um, but sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I like to hang out with people, sometimes I like to just be by myself. And a lot of skeptics and, and nerds and geeks and things like that are people that tend to like to be by themselves, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I wrote a song that uh, deals with that, that's called The Assumption, and that's this. All of the people who would rather be by themselves aren't inherently unhappy. I know you know you think I think I am the best But let me get a few things off of my chest Because I stand alone, what you call a frown Does not mean I'm stuck up, if anything I'm stuck down I know you know you think I think I am the shit But the truth could not be much further from it I'd rather have you wonder what I'm all about then open up my mouth and remove any doubt. Don't you assume you really know me. Don't you assume I'm sad and lonely. Don't wonder what I'm not revealing. Looks can be concealing after all. I know you know you think I think I'm where it's at. But don't forget I see myself as bald and fat. I promise you there is some more than what you see But your assumptions tend to make an ass of just me Don't you assume you really know me Don't you assume I'm sad and lonely Don't look for answers on the ceiling Looks can be concealing after all of the people who would rather be by themselves aren't inherently unhappy so don't pile up your assumptions you be the life of the party and I'll be the party of my life I'll be the party of my life you can be the life but I will party hardy through the party of my life Think. I think my stank don't stink. I'm sorry, Mr. Gladwell, I'm more blank than blink. At first, of course, is tend to become just desserts. I hope you'll stick around for seconds and maybe thirds. For seconds and maybe thirds. For seconds and maybe thirds. Don't you assume you really know me? Don't you assume I'm sad and lonely? can be concealing after all looks can be concealing after all looks can be concealing after all of the people who would rather be by themselves aren't inherently unhappy no we're not change the tone just a little bit and I know there's a bunch of skeptics here I'm gonna kind of talk to them for a little bit if that's okay if you don't mind um, we we as skeptics we as critical thinkers we as people who uh, tend to be pragmatic and dogmatic when necessary uh, like to deal in data we like to deal in facts we like to deal in things that are sort of to a certain degree black and white you know either something works or it doesn't you know, homeopathy is bullshit, or it's not. It's bullshit. Um, 
Unfortunately, sometimes we have to deal with emotions, and skeptics and atheists dealing with emotions can kind of sometimes be difficult, and it's not a subject that comes up that often. And again, I'm just going to change the subject, just to change the tone just a little bit for a second, because I think it's an important thing to talk about when we as skeptics get together. This was something that kind of came to a head for me when I realized uh, uh, that my dog, Oscar, who was a boxer, who was the coolest dog ever, uh, was, was sick, and we had to... We had to put him down. We had to, we had to end his life, to end his suffering. And as an atheist, as someone who doesn't believe in an afterlife, it was very tempting for me to picture him in puppy heaven, you know, where the squirrels run really slow. <laughs> like the squirrels are in wheelchairs and they just, like, you know. it was very tempting. But it was my, I realized it was my foxhole moment. And what do I mean by that? I mean that there's this saying, I'm sure you know, there's no atheists in foxholes, which I think is bullshit. Go ahead, you're good. Which I think is absolute bullshit. I think, I think we as atheists often have these foxhole moments where we really have to be vigilant. And I didn't want to picture my dog in heaven because that raised far too many more questions than it answered. It raised far too many more questions than it provided me comfort with. Like, wait a minute, he's in heaven and does he miss me? Is there some like simulacrum, some fake Geo who's like playing with him? Because that's not right. Like if someone's going to play with my dog, I'm going to play with my dog. And it just didn't provide me any comfort. And the only comfort I sort of managed to find was this idea that in those final moments of, of Oscar's life, when he was at home and his eyes were about to close, and I, I, I don't mean to anthropomorphize too much, because I know, I know he's just an animal, I know that. But boy, he was just, he was my buddy. In those final moments when his eyes were closing, I realized he was very tired and maybe he thought, I'm gonna go to sleep and when I wake up, this bald guy is gonna take me for a walk. Because that's what he does every day. And that's what we do. And that's where he is forever. And as that happened, I realized that the only bit of solace, the only bit of comfort I got was the idea that he is done and he doesn't get to miss me, but I get to miss him. That that's my job and I want, I want to be hurt. I don't want him to be hurt. The same way that if any one of my loved ones died or passed on, you know, I always say this to my mom because she still believes and she says, I'll be looking down from heaven. I say, Ma, you don't relax now. How are you going to relax when you're omniscient? <laughs> you don't get any sleep as it is. And you're going to be in heaven wondering if I'm, you know, wearing a sweater? <laughs> so it provided a little bit of comfort where I realized, you know what, Oscar's gone. And it's a price that I was willing to pay because, you know, everything has its price. And something like unconditional love from an animal that is just the coolest animal ever has to have a huge price. And that huge price was just massive hole in my heart. But I wanted it. I wanted it to be there. I wanted it to not be, not be fed and not be solaced at all because I wanted to remember how much he meant. And the idea that he doesn't have to miss me, but I miss him provided a little bit of comfort. And I'd rather have a little bit of comfort based on logic and something that's real than a lot of comfort based on complete bullshit. So this is called small comfort. Good boy, good boy. I really appreciate you trying to be something. It wasn't a touching moment we were going for it. It's totally fine. <laughs> Ingmar, table for two. Ingmar, table for two. I don't believe in heaven. I know that there's no hell. I don't think you've gone anywhere. I guess that's just as well. Because I want to remember look in your eye It was the best and worst thing To get to say goodbye To you They say we're not 
not supposed to comprehend But I want to know more Being there with you at the end Was a pain I had hoped for Did you know where you were going? Did you like the time you'd spent? stayed longer but that's not how it went now I know there's no forever but of all the hearts I've met I think the place we ended up was as close as one could get to cheer you leave by my own hand were the cards that were dealt me some would blame the dealer some would blame the deal some would make up stories that never could be real i know when you left you were glad to be back home i think that you knew you would never be alone i have no need for heaven or some eternal bluff i prefer what's real and what we had here that you can never miss me thinking you'll wake up and see us is your eternity it's a small comfort I miss you I miss you I love Thank you for indulging me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're very kind. Okay, on a completely different subject here. Uh, I was asked by a podcast called the 365 Days of Astronomy Podcast to write their theme song. Uh, Dr. Pamela Gay got in touch with me and she said, uh, uh, could you write a theme song for us? And I said, what should it sound like for this astronomy cast? And she said, it shouldn't sound like Enya. <laughs> and I said I could totally do that I could totally do that so I ended up writing this now you have to help me out here because in the chorus there's a couple lines there's three lines you have to say so I say this stuff is far and you say it's really far and I go this stuff is far 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 away we're talking far like uber far okay and you say uber correctly I know I don't, but you say it correctly, which is so cool that we're here, so you can say uber correctly. So this stuff is far, it's really far. This stuff is far, far, far away. We're talking far, like uber far. You can't get there by car today. It's super duper crazy far, but not just pulsars, quicksars, and stars. I mean, it's far, far, far. If there's some doubt, listen to a shout. This stuff is far, all right? So it's really far, like uber far. This stuff is far. Let's try the chorus together. Here we go. This stuff is far. It's really far. This stuff is far, far, far away. We're talking far, like blue and far. Being there by car in a day. Super duper crazy. Far but I just pull stars, quasars, and stars. I mean, it's far, far, far. If there's a doubt, listen to a shout. This stuff is far. Excellent, excellent, excellent. A plus. Way better than those Norse bastards. <laughs> comes across your face you try to fathom distances of all the stuff in space but you can't wrap the bacon of your mind around the fig of all the terms required to describe how big is big so let me get specific and use words scientific go about your thesaurus for this exacting chorus Ready? this stuff is hard Your brain is your mind gets blown by what I just did explain. 
away. Sorry if my words might drive you all insane, but that's what happens when precision is your middle name. So with that exacting factor, like some sextant or protractor, using details quite semantic, I'll show how huge is this gigantic. This stuff is far, far, stuff is far, far, far away. We're talking far. Super duper crazy far, but not just ball stars, queen stars, and stars. I mean, it's far, far, far. If there's a down, listen to a shout. It's far too big to explain in any concise ways. It might just have to take 365 days. I hope that I have offered up some technical assistance. And haven't caused your ticker too much ventricular resistance But you have got to listen and trust my insistence That I am very accurately describing the distance One more friggin' time Stuff is far, stuff is far, far, far away We're talking far, far, far there by car in a day It's super duper crazy far But I'm just full stars, quasars, and stars I mean it's far, 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 far If there's some down, listen to a shout Stuff is far my name is George Robb. Thanks so much to the Swedish skeptics for making this life possible. Thanks to the big man over here. We will see you next time. Geologic Records is my uh, website, geologicpodcast.com. Please come see me in the back if you want to take some of the party home with you. Thanks so much and good night.